Greetings, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Another Sabbath closer to crisis soon coming. I'm Pastor Michael J. Johnson from the Pasadena Seventh-day Adventist Church. Church family, want to bring you a message today of encouragement, but also a message that really tells where we are in time in this earth's history. So let us go ahead and begin the message today. And I want you to understand that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is soon to come even at the door. But I want to ask the question, have you noticed what's happened within the last few days, weeks, and even months in this world? You know, we see the wars continuing throughout the world and many are going into Christless graves. A few years ago, even the housing market crashed and the loss of jobs and has led to multiplied foreclosures in this country. Even in the not too far distant, not long ago, we've seen millions of fish dying and being washed upon the shores and birds falling out of the sky to their death by the thousands. And the explanations for this is mere speculation for many. Murders and thefts and immorality across the nation are at all time high. Earthquakes are still taking place at an alarming rate. And now we have the coronavirus shutting down gradually the entire globe. Are we surprised? Well, we shouldn't be. People now see the uncertainty of their future. Uncertain? Yes, because people are afraid now. How do I know? The local stores cannot keep water or toilet paper on the shelves where people are trying to stock up and stay in. Afraid? Once there was a time when people felt secure on their jobs, secure in their homes, secure with their bank accounts, but not any longer. There's something going on here. Yes, the signs are the times. God's message to us today, especially myself, is entitled, Ready or Not, Here I Come. Would you pray with me? God of heaven, we thank you for blessing us to have this Sabbath one more closer to your soon coming. We're asking now that your Holy Spirit will touch our hearts and bless us, Lord, as we hear a message from on high. I'm in the boat with the rest of my church family. I need this message as well. So I'm asking you, your God, to take charge and thank you for the blessing for us all in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My beloved, the question comes that may be pressing on your heart and mind right now as you experience now looking at the events that are taking place in this world. And you can't help but ask, what's going on? Well, I'm glad you're interested in that. You have tuned into the right place at the right time in your life to find the answer to that solemn question. You see, my brothers and sisters, as we see things are getting worse by the day with this coronavirus pandemic, the Bible speaks of the signs that proclaims the nearness of Christ's return to take us, his faithful children, home. But check this out. In Matthew chapter 24, looking at verse 1, and if you would take your Bibles and follow along with me, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world. And Jesus answered, saying to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For the nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes, and divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Beloved, this is not intended, this message is not intended to frighten anyone, but we need to know that there are skip tracers 
which are databases that the government uses to keep track of everyone and every move we make. And because of all the things that has taken place, especially in that day of terrorism that took place on September 11th, 2001. And guess what? Unless you thought you have any privacy left in this country, every time you make a move, you are going into somebody's database. Did you know that you cannot hide in this country unless you are on the run intentionally, trying to avoid being found and know what not to do to keep them from being found? This is one of the reasons identity theft is on a rise across this world. And if you have a cell phone with you, lo your location is always known. Uncle Sam is watching. Every move we make, everything we do is on record. All I'm saying, beloved, we cannot trust the things of this world. What has taken place this past week, we know that we can't. In the book Psalms 118, verses 8 and 9, the Word of God gives us something very, very serious to, to ponder. And it says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. The bottom line is our hope should not be placed in this world. As we see the coronavirus spread and the multiplied earthquakes, tsunamis and tornadoes and floods and everything else that's taking place, it causes our minds to ponder and wonder what's going on. Beloved, before we know it, all security on this earth will be gone. Many people are putting all of their hope in the U.S. government. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not bringing argument against the president of the United States or the, those government officials on Capitol Hill in D.C. I just want to share with you what God says about it from his word. In Psalms 118.9 the word of God tells us it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, the kings of this world. My stand is to put God first. That should be all of our stand. Trust him and his word and put his will first. Think about it. My brothers and sisters, with all of the things taking place here on earth, people are even losing their jobs, homes, and famines is spreading rampantly throughout the eastern countries in this world. It is time for us to hear the gospel and make our calling and election sure. And I want you to understand as Bible-believing people that the current events that is taking place according to the Bible prophecy in this world is revealing to all of us that this world is marching towards an inevitable end. It's moving into its final chapter. Beloved, many people in this world are asleep and deaf to what's going on in this world and that the Lord is soon to come. The Bible gives us counsel on this as well. And notice what he says in Romans 13, 11. Romans 13, 11. And the verse says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. You see, my brothers and sisters, Jesus describes the conditions of this world when it's near its end. Matthew chapter 24, let's take another look at that. And here we see when Jesus went out and he departed from the temple and the disciples came unto him, wanting him to show them what all of the, the things that's going to take place in these last days. And he said, you see all these things in verse 2, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He goes on to share about all the things that will be taking place that closes this earth's history. All of the things like earthquakes and fire and floods and even the non-loving individuals who claim to be children of God where the love will wax cold. You see, he gets down to verse 14 and he says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. My friends, please understand, the God of heaven is fed up with all the sin that has flooded this world. Oh, yes. And he says in Hosea chapter 4, looking at verses 1 to 3. Hosea 4, 1 to 3. And the word of God says, hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. 
For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because, why? There is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Why? By swearing, lying, killing, stealing, committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. Notice what the word of God says about the fish of the sea. Notice what else he says in Zephaniah 1, 2, and 3. I will utterly consume all things off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fish of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from the land, saith the Lord. This reminds me of something that has taken place not too long ago. My brothers and sisters, in reading these two texts, remembering what just happened some time ago, the birds and the fish dying by the multiplied thousands. Remember that. These should speak. To our hearts letting us know that something major is about to happen the Lord says to us in Matthew chapter 24 37 to 39 but as it was in the days of Noah so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered to the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them away, so all, so the coming of the Son of Man shall be. It will be the same way, brothers and sisters. Notice what the Word of God says in Genesis 6, 5 through 7. Genesis 6, 5 through 7. And beginning with verse 5, he says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man from whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it has repented me, it has repented me that I have made them. God was disgusted with this creation. You see, my brothers and sisters, the Lord had a problem with the wickedness in Noah's day, and it's no different today. The Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. But I want to pause here to tell you that Jesus loves all of us. Yes, and he wants to save us. But many people aren't interested in his appeals for them to give him their heart. They don't realize that he's their only hope. So therefore, this is why he allows certain things to happen to get everybody's attention. To listen to his loving call for their salvation. Notice what the word of God says here in Isaiah 26, 9 and 10. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he will not, he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. You see, my friends, please understand, God is not sadistic. God wants to save us. God did not intend for this world to become the way it is. Therefore, he sent his son to rescue us from it. This is a commentary on unregenerated human nature. Human nature is so messed up. Human nature demands trial and trouble before people will turn to God. God wants to save us all from this sin-cursed earth. How do I know? Because he says in Peter, 2 Peter 3, 9, that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to, the, to repentance. God wants to save us all. He loves us. He sent his son to rescue us from the conditions of this world. You see, but brothers and sisters, in a little while, in a little time, where people now have interest in everything else, 
I praise God that there are people, still people, who have an interest in the word of God. Not only do they have an interest, but they will want to tell all their loved ones about Jesus and his saving grace. That is, the loving grace of Jesus and his saving power. Because so many people are very, very insecure right now. But let me pause for a moment to tell you that Jesus died to save us from our sins. And he has a plan for your life to be a witness to others who are in spiritual darkness that they may see the light and be saved also. And if you really truly love your family, your relatives and, and neighbors, friends, and, and, and just name everybody, you will want to invite them to find out this gospel of the kingdom of God. Beloved, to make it through the final crises of earth history, we need more of the spirit of God. And I don't know if you recognize it or not, but to manage your own life is impossible. Even the most disciplined person cannot keep themselves. So the question comes, what are the conditions for receiving the knowledge and salvation of God? Number one, it's going to take somebody under the sound of my voice to be willing to give up everything that's not of God. Everything. Everything. And you're going to find out what's not of God by the study of his word and tuning in to the Pasadena Church's website, YouTube channel, and Facebook page. Oh, yes. Once you learn the will of God from his word, not mixed with man's opinion, your acceptance cannot be half-hearted. We're living in a crisis right now. We have to get somewhere and spend some serious time in prayer. Why, Lord? Because he's our only hope. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The sealing agent is the Holy Spirit. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit to live according to God's will. It's time to get close to Jesus right now. Beloved, as I mentioned, we're sealed by the Spirit of God. We need the Holy Spirit. And the emphasis here today is to direct our attention to the real need in our lives. And that is a true personal relationship with Jesus. And that is what the Holy Ghost wants to do with this message. He wants to get us out of here. God wants to take us home. There's a lot of people out there who's looking for hope. And some have placed their hope in toilet paper and water. But what we need is that living water that only Christ can give and that is revealed in his word. And that hope is Jesus. We need the power of Jesus in our lives. Again, why, Lord? Because the signs point to his soon coming. And ready or not, he's coming. Jesus says, I want to take charge of how you live completely. And you know why? Jesus says, I'm your only hope. He says, why don't you consider the woman with the issue of blood? She tried all types of physicians before me. Then she finally realized that I was her only hope. You see, people are looking for security, help, and cures for many of their problems in life, but looking in all the wrong places. We need to understand that Jesus is our only hope. And we need to catch the vision, just like the thief on the cross. Even at the door of his death, his deathbed, if you please, this thief realized that his life was shameful, a disgrace, and a terrible testimony to many. But there's somebody listening today who feels that their life is not worth living and that it is hopeless because of your mistakes of the present and the past. But I want to tell you today, don't despair. No. You see, beloved, this thief felt that he had no hope either. But then he realized this man, Jesus, was my only hope. You see, there are individuals listening today weeping and wetting their pillows with their tears at night. Word about that husband, that wife, that wayward son or daughter. Word about that mother, that father, that brother, that sister or that relative or even that close friend. Oh, but let me tell you, Jesus is their hope. So therefore pray, continue to pray without ceasing. 
Pray that they will open their hearts to the love of God and give their lives over to him completely. The same is what we must do. Put them in the hands of the living God and he, Jesus, will lead them to realize that he's their only hope. Jesus has a plan to bring them to. God says to all of us right now, as I have allowed the coronavirus to take its course, I know I have your attention now. I'm coming soon and I want to take you home with me. Ready or not, here I come. So you have to let go of your ideas and accept my ideas. We have to let go of our plans and accept God's plans for us. We have to let go of what we want and accept what God desires for us. This world is not our home. You see, God says, I will give you the power of the Holy Spirit if you will surrender your will to me completely. Beloved, we need to give these things to God. What do you say? God says to us that we've been trying to do it our way for too long. My friends, aren't you tired of wasting time and money? Nothing truly prospers without it being God's will. Now let me bring this down to a close in a moment here. You see, beloved, the God of heaven is giving us some of the answers regarding the gospel. The reason for sharing this gospel is because he's coming. And if you're tired of the challenges of this life and you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, or even if you're just listening today, please understand that God ordained this moment for you to realize your need of him because he's coming soon. And again, he's your only hope. You see, if you put God first, you can trust in what he says. And that is in Psalms 91, with all the things that are happening in this world, with all of the challenges that are taking place, with this pestilence that's going around, around the coronavirus, if you please. He says in Psalms 91, beginning with verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence, the virus, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, yes, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. And there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Our God will protect his faithful children from all plagues and pestilences. Yes, this virus. God has gotten the world's attention now. Many are running scared. But God says, I'm going to protect my children. And I want to protect everybody on earth. But those who give allegiance to me, those who pay attention to what's going on in this world, because now I've gotten their attention by, uh, by allowing this, they need to understand I am their only hope. And they need to understand that I did not intend for this world to be in the condition that it's in. I intend to bring them home to a place where there's no more pestilences and plagues and all types of sinful things. Inspiration says from Acts of the Apostles 153, the angel of the Lord encamped about around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Psalms 34 7. You see, it says God's commissioned his angels to save his chosen ones from calamity, to guard them from the pestilence that walketh in darkness, and the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Psalms 91. Again, God will protect his faithful children. Please have courage and encourage others of God's will 
for their lives and that he would protect them. And I want to leave you with this thought coming from the great book John, St. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. See, God doesn't want us to remain here. God wants to take us away from here. And in verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now listen carefully as I close. The great outpouring of the Spirit of God, which enlightens the whole earth with His glory, will not come until we have an enlightened people. This is why we need to share messages like this to enlighten people. My friends and church family, there is no security in this world. This thing is going down. Yes, the word of God says so. And as we've read from the scripture, why not give him your life completely today? Because ready or not, here he comes. So my appeal to all of us, especially myself, God loves us so much and he desires to save us. And listen, we can clearly see that this coronavirus is a threat to lead not just this country, but this world into a major financial collapse. This will bring about even more challenges, not just in this country, but in this world. This thing could mushroom to where Jesus is, will be coming sooner than we think. And I believe he is coming sooner than we think. We don't know if it all subside or not. We don't know if it's going to just end in a, a month or two or whatever. But we do know it is a sign of the end times. It is a sign that it is time for us to make our calling an election sure. And sure, as many often say, we need to occupy till he comes. Yes, we need to do that. But Christ does not wish for us to remain on this earth in its sin curse condition. In Hebrews chapter 10, Verse 37, our God says, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. He will not tarry. The signs of the time is about us. So today, give him your life and your heart today. He's your only hope. He's our only hope. May the Lord bless us and keep us as we prepare for his soon coming, as we share our faith, especially to those who are discouraged and, 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 and frightened today. The God of heaven is calling us for such a time as this. Beloved, let's be faithful. Let's trust God. Let's not give up on God. Let us look up and realize our redemption draweth nigh. As it says in Luke 21, 28, when we see these things happening, look up for our redemption draweth nigh. We as a people have been called to spread the three angels' messages and, and share the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. No other time in earth's history can I imagine to even think about that you can have the attention of everybody except for down in 9-11 when that took place. But guess what? This is around the whole entire globe. This is a situation that we all must realize and understand that Jesus is coming and ready or not, he's coming. So give him your heart today. Share this message to those that you believe would be encouraged by it. We pray now that we will go forward in faith as a faithful church, church that resides in Pasadena and also throughout the globe. God's last day church, his remnant church. The Lord is looking for us to be faithful today. Let us give him our whole heart and not give up. Trust him all the way. And let's now be prayerful. Let's fast. And I want to share with you that there will be, there will be even more things that we will be presenting online and also for our spiritual enrichment for the coming Sabbath throughout the week. But praise God for what he's doing now. He has the world's attention 
and he has our attention. And now it's time for us to truly make our calling and election sure. You don't have to worry about this virus. God says, I have you in my hands and I'm not going to let you down. Our God is a great God. He's a good God and he loves us so much. So would you bow your heads with me and pray as we continue by faith going forward to do the will of God and sharing our faith and giving people hope in such a time as this. Why? Because ready or not, he's getting ready to come. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your blessings upon us. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come and hear a word from on high. God of heaven, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And right now, Lord, your spirit is speaking to many hearts to consider giving their lives to you completely, even for the first time. So we're asking, O oh God, for forgiveness of sin, trespasses, and iniquities. And we're asking, O oh God, that you will bless in a very special way everyone under the sound of my voice, every family. Touch all of our lives with your Holy Spirit, and may we be faithful until you shall come. Thank you in advance for delivering us and protecting us as we move forward in these days with uncertainty. And though these days have uncertainty, we know it is certain that you're soon to come and all of this will be over. So when you come in the clouds of glory, O oh God, take us home with you. Therefore, you have the permission from all of us to prepare us to be ready, whatever it takes. And bless us and keep us until you shall come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you, church family, and let's continue to move forward in faith as God's faithful children in these last days. Goodbye.